interventional radiology and artificial excellence. She is passionate about solving problems faced by the health sector in Nigeria. Our undergraduate degree was obtained from the University of Jos Plateau State, Nigeria in 2018, where she recorded numerous successes in her tenure as president and executive member of various committees, steering the activities on campus forward. Dr. Mutiak did not only focus on academics, but also volunteered in community services via a series of medical outreaches, orphanage visitations, and mentorship of junior colleagues in her department. She received an award of excellence as the hematology course representative of her set. Academically, she was the best in mathematics in her first year during her university days. Going forward, she's on the lookout for various opportunities to explore in detail the realities of the deteriorating status of healthcare delivery in Nigeria, thus building her curiosity and morale. Meanwhile, she remains resilient in developing her skills in the field of medicine, radiology, AI, and leadership. Please, let's make welcome Dr. Mutiat Taye Alabi as she starts and open the webinar on health for all, is it a right or a privilege? Thank you, Ma. You have the floor, Ma. Please unmute. We cannot hear you. Oh, sorry. Thank you so much for that introduction. I hope I'm audible enough now. Yes, you are. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to ask, please, Mr. Femi, are you with my slides? So that you can share. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. I need Mr. Sobilola, Sobilola to share my slide. He has my slide with him. All right, Mr. Tobiloba, please. Okay, yes, I will do now. I will do to help share it. It's, it's an honor to be invited to speak on such a great um, platform. I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to hold this talk here. We have our issues. I'm actually currently in the hospital. I had to take a break to come online for this. See, sorry, just a few minutes. Let me get an alternative. Okay, so can I go on, please? Hello, can you hear yes, me? Please. You can go on, Ma. Okay, thank you. So today we'll be talking about World Health Day, with the theme being health for all, whether or not it is a right or a privilege. Nigeria is peculiar when we talk about healthcare system, healthcare delivery, and then thinking, talking about the coverage, number of people who are able to access healthcare, it's even more worrisome. Not to talk more of those who are able to afford it. Well, I learned my discussion should be limited to 20 minutes. That I will try as much as possible to cover up what I intend to tell my audience. But trust me, I really need it to follow through so that before the end of the discussion, I want you to start thinking of 
what we can do to actually redeem the Nigerian healthcare system. So please let's next slide. Let's let's start immediately. Okay, so regarding today's um the World Health Day, it's it's a day that is being marked by the World Health, which is an agency under the United Nations. And the United Nations, as we know, partners with people to promote health, to keep the world safe and serve, especially vulnerable people. Everyone and every everyone everywhere is supposed to have the highest level of health. But come to think of it, what exactly is health? Is it just about being well or just about being sick? Health has a broader meaning and it is defined as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Less for me, that last statement gives it all. It tells you that it's just much more than what many people see as being healthy. That somebody is working does not mean they are healthy. So, not merely the absence of disease and infirmity, which is why when you see somebody laughing, you should want to ask deeper questions like, are you sure you're fine? Questions like that. Next slide, please. Okay, so the health for all entails promoting healthy lifestyles among all age groups. So that's the word you should take of all age group. What are the things that define good health among everyone across the different age group? It starts from caring for females. Females are the ones who actually who have been embodied with reproduction, giving birth to people who eventually grow up to be adults and then the cycle continues. So how well are our females being taken care of? Next slide, please. So back to the question, health for all, is it a right or a privilege? The next few slides will make us understand where exactly Nigerian falls. The presentation, sorry, I have an issue here. The slide is not displaying fully. Mr. Fermi, there's something you can do about that. The slide isn't displayed fully. There is this blue. I think I should just use mine. Hello, Mr. Fermi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, so. And the problem with the display. Preferably, let me use mine. Sorry, just a minute, please. Okay, fine. Yeah, so back to uh, right to health. So I said in the next few slides, we should be able to tell whether or not the healthcare delivery system in Nigeria has actually made healthcare for all a right or a mere privilege. According to the United Nations, in the Article 12 of the 1966 International Convention Convenance, on economic, social, and cultural rights. It says that everyone has the right to enjoy the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health. But there are some emphasis to which they have actually restricted what the health statistics they actually want to attain, which is reduction on still death rates and infant mortality, also 
emphasis on environmental and industrial hygiene because this aspect of health actually affects so many other parts of the lives of people. Then they also made emphasis on the control of epidemic, endemic and occupational diseases. In addition, there should be creation of conditions which would assure to all medical services and medical attention in the event of sickness. For this discussion, I would like to take us through what is important in terms of the health needs of the different age groups. There's a slide on display that gives illustrate the different categories of people as defined by the word health. So when a child is born, is first as a new need from the first four weeks of life. After the first four weeks of life, until the child is one year, one year old, he or she is first as an infant. And a toddler is a child between one to three years old. Children who are between the age of three and five are referred to as preschool children. And those who are between six and 12 years old are school age children. You may, you may be wondering why this category, categorization is important. It is from this that you will know what and what this particular person or this child needs for actual survival, for the person to be able to say he or she is healthy. You go down the line, as the children grow into adolescence, who should be at the age of 13 to 18 years of age, then young adults between 19 and 40, middle age from 41 to 65 are them. Older adults or the elderly, as we like to describe them, are over 65 years of age. Just like I told you earlier that health for all actually means that we start taking care of females because they are the ones who have the productive capacity. So how do we do that? We start by ensuring that females who are in their reproductive age group, for example, women who are expecting to get pregnant anytime soon, should start taking folic acid one tablet a day. One tablet is like five milligrams. You may be wondering why that is important. It is important because there's something referred to as folic stores in females. When that store is being depleted, there's a likelihood that any child being born by that female may have what we call neural tube defect. As much as possible, I'll try to explain some of this terminology so that you don't get lost. So then you can note down your questions. Should there be any term I mentioned that um, you actually don't understand? So in the next few slides, I'll give you some tips on what each age group actually needs for them to be healthy. It's an educative session. I don't just want to talk about the so many problems affecting healthcare system in Nigeria without actually enlightening everyone what you should be doing for each particular age group. You're related to your nieces, your nephews, your cousins. You have different age groups within your family ties. So this is what you should know. Females who are in their reproductive age group should be on folic acid. Then it is compulsory, permit me to use the word compulsory, to know your genotype, especially for intending couples. You don't want to get married after all the honeymoon and the love you sessions and then give birth to a child who has sickle cell anemia. Believe me, parents who have children who have sickle cell anemia go into so much psychosocial stress because of the numerous hospital visits, seeing their child in painful crisis, especially when, when it becomes very frequent, like two crises in the month, you're frequenting the hospital out of, us, out, out of working hours, out of school days because of frequent hospital visits. This can be preventable. Please try to check your genotype. Ensure you do it before getting married or even bringing a child to life. As much as possible, also avoid over-the-counter medications during pregnancy. So emphasize this to your females. Avoid over-the-counter medications because some drugs are teratogenic, like they affect the development of the unborn child, which can predispose the person to cancer. So if somebody has cancer, 
the problem may have started right from when before they were born. That's the point I'm trying to raise. Are we together, please? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. So also of importance is ensuring that females eat balanced diets. For the guys, please don't say I'm emphasizing on the females. It's very necessary. When your woman is healthy, there's definitely going to be a happy home, trust me. Because her fruits will also be healthy. So please take care of your women. Balance an adequate diet. You should spend money on preventing diseases than trying to kill them. That's the message. So we've talked about what, what is to be done before the child is born. Some of the things you should do. So when, you're, when a child is delivered, prior to that, you should be wary of where you are going to deliver your child. Pregnancy is a, for many women, is a high risk um, condition. High risk in the sense that there could be so many complications along the line. So you should be wary of where to deliver your child. Ensure that your pregnant woman has actually undergone series of antenatal care is very important, is very key. It is during this phase in pregnancy that different comorbidities are being identified so that the woman can be monitored when due. So not every woman can deliver at home. You see people say, ah, she delivered at home. Don't listen to them. Her own condition may be different from yours. So because the first person did it and it went well, doesn't mean that if you try it, you succeed. So please, as much as possible, be wary of where you deliver your, your child. For women who are maybe hypertensive or diabetic, it is a must. You should deliver your baby in at least a secondary institution where you can get the services of a pediatrician. You see, so many babies after the new ceremony, you tell you, ah, what you father need, I go along to the father. All those things is because the child was not well examined. You didn't get somebody who should pay attention to that child when the child was born. If you want to register for an antenatal check, this hospital, do they have a pediatrician? Do they have neonatal care unit that can care for your child as soon as the child is born? So please, let's take note. Also, for child, children who, who appear to be seemingly okay, this in the first, at least two weeks of life of every child, ensure you always look at the eyes. You just smile and say, ah, NTB, when you go to greet, if you have the opportunity of seeing the child, pay close attention. This, uh, this conjunctiva, the white part of the eyes, that's what we call conjunctiva. Look at it clearly. Is it a little yellow or a little green? Or if it is white, fine. For any signs of yellowness or being white, please call the attention of the parents of that child. Also, in a bit to prevent neonatal jaundice, Please avoid scented cosmetics, be it wipes, be it um, powder, whatever it is that is scented. Because some of these babies have um, a tendency to get their red blood cells broken down from that um, effect. And the reason why I decided to talk about neonatal journey is just so that you can have a happy mother and a happy baby at the end of the journey of pregnancy. It's very painful when you see babies grow up. Ideally, you should get a child start sitting down with support from four months, and then by six months, the child should be able to speak without support. So children who have um, neonatal jaundice usually have their developmental milestones delayed. They don't work on time. They don't sit on time. They can't hold their neck upright on time. So please, let's ensure that we help, especially new mothers, identify these things as soon as possible. Then we no longer throw babies up. Hey, you have given birth, and then you keep flinging the baby up. We don't do that anymore. I'm sure some of us here must have heard of what is best to have shaking baby syndrome. If the neurological problem affects the brain, especially when there's micro bleeding into the brain. So that's one of the things Anybody you see, please always stop them. Please don't do that. Don't do that politely. Don't do that. You can explain later, but immediately stop that behavior. But 
infants, it is gold standard, exclusive breastfeeding. When, you're, when the mother-in-law says, ah, she can the mommy tell the mother-in-law that breast meat is 99% water. 99% water. So we have to feed, we have to give the child breast milk alone. I'm already hearing two minutes more. There are a lot to say. Okay, I will try to sum up. But I guess by the end of this session, you'll be able to go through the slides. Please read through carefully. You are going to get a handful of tips on what each age group should know so that they can live a healthy life. And the, the, the onus of this discussion is just to let us know that it is better to prevent any disease than to try to cure it. If you go that through, if you scroll through the slides, you'll see where I said how expensive is healthcare. There's a slide that says one session of dialysis is about 40,000 Naira in today's um, economic status. And you have to have like three times dialysis within a week. So you can imagine how much you'll be spending. That's just for dialysis. There are other series of investigations you need to do to be healthy. So I'm sure that you would agree with me that trying to prevent these diseases is much more cheaper than trying to kill them. You save your loved ones from pain, painful episodes, from emotional stress as well. Now, back to our healthcare system. The truth is, there are patients who even with their money cannot get or cannot get quality service, especially in today's um, Nigeria where you have um, so a great deal of brain drain. You have specialists going abroad just to further their um, knowledge as well as as well as searching for greener pastures. Again, it also tells you that. As much as possible, try to ensure you prevent disease at all costs. In a, in a country like ours, where even though the government is trying, there's national health insurance scheme, there are different um, health maintenance organizations trying to make healthcare affordable. affordable. But the question now is how many people are enrolled under this scheme? Those who are on learning, those who are in the rural areas, how accessible are these schemes to them? And that's where the youth come in. What can you do to ensure that you can bridge the gap between those in the rural areas and those in the urban cities? You have so many doctors or healthcare um, pr practitioners review who will not um, reside in rural areas because of so many problems, insecurity, lack of social amenities, and the rest. So what can you do to ensure that a doctor or a nurse can live comfortably in the rural um, areas with her life, he or she, his or her life being secured so as to render healthcare services to those in the rural areas? So those are the things that I would like us to take um, to think about in this after this webinar. What are other financial solutions that you can bring on board to make everybody included, everybody to make healthcare service and healthcare attention a right, not just a privilege. Because if you look at it, it's only those who can afford healthcare that actually enjoy the privileges of having medical practitioners around. But if you cannot afford it, then it's no longer a thing of your right. And the Services, the opportunities being put forward by the government is obviously not enough. I, I had to go through um, Oyo State Health Insurance Agency and under their list of healthcare providers, I realized not every local government actually have a hospital under that scheme. So what happens to the thousands and millions of people in that local government with that opportunity? So those are the areas I want us to to look into what are the solutions we can come up, how can we innovate to ensure that health, the coverage of health service is increased, reduce mortality and mobility year in, year out. Future trends, I'm, I'm sure we have so many women now in tech, the men too are doing wonderfully well, but we still need 
to continue. It's not just about the monetary aspect now, but also the services we are going to be rendered, the solutions we are going to be created to ensure that the statistics from Nigerian healthcare delivery system is actually improved. So please let's take a look at that and then ensure that we assist, we contribute our own quota to ensuring that the system can be improved. Having said that, I'd like to close by saying, I'd like to close by saying that um, information is very powerful. You need to know what is right. You need to seek for information from credible sources. There are a lot of, ah, if you drink ginger, if you drink garlic, your ulcer will just go once away or if you take pepper and this food sauce you will not have diarrhea or it's very deadly there are a lot of things please make a doctor your friend make a doctor your friend not just a doctor get their credible site to get the right information please ensure that you are being informed don't just go on the internet and browse just any site they can do more harm than good please get your information from credible sources and invest in your health. It's also reducing your uh, your health because if you don't sleep well, you cannot recuperate from the days and the accidents that have built up in your system. So please let's take be wary of that as well. Then leadership. We've had series of lectures on leadership. The problem of Nigeria, if you ask many elites, they'll tell you is that of leadership. So it begins with you, it begins with me. I'm sure from this video you must have noticed that the power has been going on and on several times. So that is part of it. How are you? How honest are you? How truthful are you? How committed? How selfless are you? Do you put yourself first? in terms of making decisions that should benefit the public or your interests and your, your intentions as to, as to make life of the people easier, life of the people to make you happier, improving the standard of living. Please, let's ensure that we emulate and be ambas good ambassadors in every institution that we find ourselves before we eventually get to what we refer to as the top. So with this, I would like to say thank you for the opportunity to speak on World Health Day. Healthcare for all is, should actually be a right, which should be subsidized by the government or should make available by all in charge of healthcare policy making, and not just merely a privilege to some. Thank you very much. If there are questions, I would like to take them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mutiat Taiye. We really do appreciate your session with us. We'll be having questions and answers. So I want everybody to keep writing their questions down. There will be time for that immediately after we have the second speaker so that we can take all questions and answer at the same time. So Ma, please stay with us. Um, we are still enjoying your presence. So please still stay with us, right? <laughs> All right, All so right. I think we have learned one or two things from what Dr. Mutsi has just shared with us. As much as yes, time didn't allow her to expand much, but we still got something. We understood that health is not just about, there's no disease in my body. It's about physical, mental, and social well-being. So we can have people that are walking on the road normally, but their mental well-being is being, uh, and their mental health is being challenged. And then that last part where she said, sleep, please sleep. All those people that used to aspire to aspire, that used to tell you to sleep just two hours in 24 hours. <laughs> Please sleep. Sleep is good. She just said that. Thank you very much. All right. Without You're wasting welcome. much of our time, we have the second speaker already with us in person of Mrs. Ibukon Oluwa Oteshile. I will do a very short um, run through of a biography. And as soon as I'm done, please, you have the floor, ma'am. All right. So Ibukuoluwa Debolanle Oteshile is an experienced development worker and humanitarian with a passion for creating and driving local solutions using well-grounded research approaches. 
She has a proven track record of project implementation, research, and evaluation, as well as leadership qualities that enable her to work effectively with other teams to achieve set goals in record time. As an implementing partner on various projects, including UNICEF and FGM, the Ibado Urban Flood Management World Bank Assisted Project, and the Sapphire Program, Otechile has facilitated training on community-based child protection committees and advocated for the abandonment of female genital mutilation and gender-based violence. She has also conducted research on the impact of sex education on the prevalence of sexual abuse and parenting style and self-efficacy as determinants of psychological adjustment among in-school adolescents in your state. She is a member of the Tax Force of your State's Nigeria National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons and Other Related Matters, NAPTIP, also a member of the Oyo State's Sexual and Gender-Based Violence Response Team. Otechile doubles as the CEO of Hope Evan Counseling Clinic, a counseling clinic that provides psychological-based services using a wide range of therapeutic approaches, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, hypnosis, anger management, stress management, alcohol and sub substance addiction therapy, and the executive director of the OSEC Foundation, where she has developed prevention and intervention programs to foster child protection and prevent gender-based violence. She coordinates and implements development programs, recruits projects and volunteer staff, monitors and evaluates intervention projects and develops rehabilitation intervention strategies on state and national response protocols for victims of SGBV, FGM, child labor, and other forms of abuse. Otechile has excellent communication and interpersonal skill and has authored two books. Mrs. Otechile, a doctoral student at the University of Ibadan, has a master's degree in counseling and human development studies from the University of Ibadan as well as professional certification and memberships, including an advanced diploma in human resource management, marketing communications, mediation, humanitarian services, public relations, human resources, capacity development, child sexual abuse, cognitive behavioral therapy, alcohol and drug addiction, psychology and psychological first aid from the London Academy Business School, Harvard University, John Hopkins University. She's a member of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, Institute of Humanitarian Studies and Development, Chartered Institute of Personal Management, Counseling Association of Nigeria and the International Counseling Association. Okay, good evening, everyone. Mrs. Ibuko Luwa Oteshile is the JCI Ibadan LI 2023 Director of Growth and Membership Services. Please make welcome Shile as she gives us our app. Good evening, ma'am. Your mic is muted. Okay, good evening, everyone just to be sure that you can hear me. Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Um, just one person can hear me. Okay, all right, thank you very much. I'd like to thank um, the organizers for having me here this evening. Um, so a quick one, I just want to uh, show my face before I put it off again, so that we can have a good time. Network is not very stable, so um, permit me to do this training or this engagement with my video off. Am I permitted, please? Yes, please. All right, thank you very much. Okay.
All right, so um, quickly, um, is health a right or is it a privilege? I'm going to be asking us um, a few questions. I'd like this to be as interactive as possible. So the first question I want to ask is, is living a right or a privilege? Anyone, please? Hello? Hi. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I just asked the question. Um, did you hear? Okay, it's a, it's a right. Okay, all right. Anybody with a different view is living a right to be alive? Is it a right or a privilege? Let me see. Looks like we have some responses. Mm. It's a privilege. Mm. It is a right. It is a right. A privilege. Okay. So if you say that to those that think that being alive is a privilege, I didn't get the question earlier. Okay. All right. Let me take the question again. Is being alive a right to live? Is it a right or a privilege? By God's grace, a privilege too. Okay, so it's a mix of both. To live is a privilege, please. Mm. Okay. All right. All right, so I'll go to my second question. Very, very interesting uh, because um, I, I like the mix that we have given to it. Now to the next question, and that's what we're talking about, is health, being healthy, uh, being, having access to quality health services. Is it a right or a privilege? Let me see what our response will be. Second question, is being in good health? A right being healthy is a right, not a not merely a privilege. Thank you. Now you're right, though. Okay, uh, Mr. Toby, I see you. Good health is a right. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, now let's go into our conversation. So the first question I ask is: Being alive, to be alive or to be able to live, is it a privilege, or is it a right? Now, it's a privilege that God has given all of us, irrespective of whatever your faith is. But once that privilege has been given, it becomes your right. Now, you have been given that privilege, and that's why you are alive. Now, what is your privilege? What, what, let, or let, me, let me put it this way. Okay, so Mr. Toby, if I by relationship give you a car riding that car or owning that car is if is out of privilege out of my benevolence but riding that car is your right so let me say it this way now to be alive is a privilege but to live is your right. Let me say it again. To be alive, that is to have breath in you, is a privilege. But to live that life that you have is your right. And that's why if anyone today takes the life of another, that person contravenes all the laws of the land because he has violated the right of that person to live. So based on that, I dare say to us that to live is a right because all of us already got that privilege and that's why we're on the face of the earth. Now, very close to that Thanks. is to be in health. Hello? Hello? Are we together, please? Yes, ma'am. We are. Okay. All right. Okay. So very close to that is to be in health. 
because um, you have to be in a state of health for you to be able to live or for you to you know, maintain your life. Whether it is physical health, whether it is mental health, whether it is um, financial health, whether it is you know, um, economic health, you need to then have that to be able to live. So I guess we can we can bring it together now to say that you know um, having access to health or being in health is very very key. Now I'm going to be talking to us. I want to assume that um, we are advocates, and I'm going to be talking to us from that point of view. But before we go on, let me quickly ask you: When was the last time you had a medical check? Everyone, quickly, Mr. Toby, I start with you. When was the last time you had a medical check? Of? that you went to the hospital and just went to check yourself. Not that you had a headache or you had malaria. Not that, um, you know, you, you, you just by yourself went to the hospital to have a medical checkup. A few weeks ago, okay, that's good. Last year, Mr. Toby, last year. Okay, Mary says last year, a few weeks ago. Okay, it's good to know that. There are a number of persons on this platform that take their health very, very seriously. Now, the place I want to come to us from is actually from the space of ignorance and from the place of our mindset. And that's the work that I want us to leave this place going to do. First with us and then to the people around us. Because the truth about it is we cannot give what we don't have. So we have been able to establish that living is a right. And having good health or being in that good health is also a right. And so if it is your right to, be, to live the life that you have, it is your right to be in health, it means that that right has to be maintained. And the truth about it is maintaining that right is not just the responsibility of the government, Although a significant part of it sits on the shoulders of the government, it is also your responsibility as the owner of, you know, as, as the sole proprietor, I, I, get, I dare to say, is also your responsibility to ensure that you maintain your state of health. It is also our collective responsibility as a people to ensure that, you know, People in our society are able to maintain their state of health. I will cite an example. Look at what happened um, in the year 2020. Just because of some person's ignorance or some person's negligence or some person's um, foolishness or some person's, you know, um, I don't even know what to say. It. You can imagine the number of deaths that the world, not just in Nigeria, recorded. So it means that what you do can affect the health of the other person. In the same vein, when you talk about the breakout of HIV, Sims Network is off right now from our speaker's side. Let's expect that in a few minutes. While she rejoins the meeting, please let's be having our question and answer already. Uh, sorry, questions now. Not a question and answer. Our questions. Please let's be getting it prepared so that as soon as it is all right, she is back. Hello? Yes, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry, I got timed out. Yes, yeah, so, you know, saying that um, I was citing the example um, with HIV, the fact that one person's um, responsibility or irresponsibility can affect other persons. And that's from the point of view that I want us to say, that the fact that we are saying that they're living in health or having health or maintaining a good state of health is our right. It also comes with responsibilities. Responsibility for you to maintain your state of health Responsibility on the part of the government to ensure that you know we have primary health care centers, we have quality um, health care services. You know, the doctor that spoke has spoken extensively on that. 
it is that responsibility of the government. It is also our responsibility as a people, as a community, to ensure that diseases are far from our environment. Now, what are we supposed to do? Because you know, the whole essence of having conversations like this is that we can go beyond from here um, and then make change, effect change in our environment. Now, so if you have agreed that being in health or enjoying good health is your right, it also means that you agree that it's the right of every other Nigerian, it's the right of every other person, whether the person is handi- uh, has a disability or the other, or the person is vulnerable, being in health is the responsibility, is the right of everybody. And because it is the right of everybody, it is also the responsibility of everybody. And that's the point that I'm, that's the side that I'm coming to us from. It is also the responsibility of, responsibility of everybody. So what are we supposed to do to ensure that as young persons, as advocates, of um, you know uh, of the sustainable development goals as Nigerians, how do we ensure that Nigeria's um, numbers in terms of mortalities and morbidities continue to reduce? We need to ensure that we take advocacy out. People must understand that must take being in health seriously. A lot of us. Um, I'm a Christian. Um, you know, where we have different people with different faiths. Uh, but a lot of us, um, what, how do I put this, over-spiritualize things that has to do with our health. And knowledge is key, knowledge is power. And so it's important that we must part-time know your state of health. That's the first place. You Don't forget if there's anything you're going away with this evening, is the fact that health is your right and it is also your responsibility. Now, because it is your responsibility, make sure that part time you know your status, your health status, whether it is your mental health, whether it is your physical health, whether it is even your financial health. Because you, of course, <laughs> money in your pocket. Um, someone said to me, I, re- I think it was a post that I read that, you know, a lot is one of getting bank a lot is one of the um, one of the quickest um, medicines or cure for all or is the one cure, one, one cure for all diseases or something like that. So financial health is also very, very important. Now, because it is your responsibility, you must know your status. You must maintain your status. First, know your mental status, your health status. You must maintain it. How do you maintain it? Seek help, get checked up. You know, do your check once in a month. In fact, the way Nigeria is, we must go from once in a month, from at least two or three times in a year, you must check yourself and be sure that, you know, um, you are at the right, um, your organs, every part of your body is functioning well. So you check yourself, you know your status, you maintain your health. It is your responsibility to maintain your health. Like we say, happiness, you know, is your choice, it's your responsibility. So um, maintain your health, do the things that make you happy, um, reduce stress as much as you can. It is your responsibility because it is your right. You know, and then the next one is you protect or defend that right that you have. The truth about it is you will have things people violate or attempt to violate your right. Now, because your health is your right, it is also your responsibility to protect yourself. So you protect your mental health, you protect your body. How do you protect your physical health? When you see that there's somebody, educate yourself, be informed. Somebody around you is smoking or is taking other things or is, is, has habits that can be injurious to yourself. You must take action about it. And the fourth one is to ensure that the people around you are also in a state of health. Because, you know, your boss will say, and, and now I think I should begin to round up at this point. I don't know how many minutes more I have, but I want to assume that I should begin to round up. Your boss will say that, um, Tiara Lee Niban, permit me, Tiara Lee Niban Je um, Kokoro, or something like that. The sound, okay, so the whole idea is if your neighbor is eating, um, I, I think, an insect or something, the sound of the chewing is not going to let the neighbors sleep. So you must understand and do all that you can to ensure that the people around you in your society also maintain the state of health. And that's where advocacy come in. 
all of us must be advocates. We must be able to encourage our people um, at the marketplace. You know, when you engage people, bring in conversations about the health into it. Uh, have you checked your blood pressure? Have you checked your sh blood sugar? I was speaking with someone that, you know, today, a young guy who told me he has blow, um, low blood pressure. And that's not the first time I'm hearing that. So you find that young people are not now just having high blood pressure. There's also low blood pressure, you know? So engage people and advocate that people find out what their status is and also do all they can to maintain the status that they have. Um, finally, I don't know how many on how many minutes more that I have. Um, I'm not sure, you know, I, I think I need you to advise me on how many minutes I have left, but I want to believe that I should begin to wrap up at this point. Now, um, today mm -hmm. we are celebrating World Health Day. And I'm going to ask you, what are you going to do differently? Now that you know that we've all agreed that being in health, a state of health is your right. I'm also leaving you with the fact that, okay, two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Toby. I'm also leaving you with the fact that it is your responsibility to ensure and maintain that status that you have. So I want to quickly put you on the spot. Everybody, what are you going to do differently going forward to ensure that you maintain your state of health? Quickly, I'm expecting, I'm expecting to see Aha, low blood pressure. So it's not just high blood pressure that we should be concerned about. We need to know. So you see, it's from doing that status, understanding your mental, your, your medical, your health status, you know, knowing your health status will save you. That's the truth about it. And all of us must take it very serious. Your blood pressure, your organs, your liver, your kidney, the heart, every organ in your body is important to know. So quickly, as I begin to wrap up, and what are you doing differently? Now that you know that your health, maintaining your health is your responsibility. Okay, Akinyemi says, engage people in health-related discussion, talking random gist to a new health level, taking random gist to a new health. Thank you very much, yes. Um, any other person sharing with us? What are you going to do differently? Quickly, quickly. Any other person sharing with us? Okay, so um, no other person sharing it with us. Um, so let me say this. Three things that, okay, sensitize my community about their health, not to wait till they, fell, they fall sick. Okay, all right, but I expected, what I was looking for is that you will start with yourself, you know, so uh, make commitment to take your health serious, to make take your diet serious because we are what we eat. We've heard that over and over again. You cannot give what you don't have before you tell community to take their health seriously. Have you taken your own health seriously? Your diet is very, very key. Your diet is very key. That's one. Two, exercise is important. And there are ways you can exercise irrespective of the kind of job that you do. Um, whether it is, you know, physically strenuous or not, please, it is important that we exercise. The third one is sleep. Just like um, the doctor said, Dr. Taye said, please let us sleep. Excuse me. The fourth is please protect your mental health. It's very, very key. How do you do that? There are two gates to the mind. You have the eye gate and the hear gate. Please guard what you watch. Guard what you listen to. Very, very important. If you're going to be able to maintain your health, guard what you listen to, guard what you watch. Those are the three things that I am going to leave with you this evening. Thank you very much for having me this evening. I don't know if there are questions that I can quickly take. If not, I might have to um, call it a day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We really do appreciate. Please, a round of applause for our speakers, Dr. Mutiat and Mrs. Oteshile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really, I'm very, 
very sure that we've learned one or two things from everything that has been said. And I know that we are making a commitment to watch our health and then the health of others around us, even if we have not been taking it very seriously. I know that from this day onwards, we are going to take our health very personal. So before the leave, we have shocks beyond the time we planned, but before the leave, very quickly, if you have any question, please drop it in the chat box very quickly so that they can attend to it before they take their leave. Mm, do we have any? While we wait for that, Okay, okay. Do we have, do we have? Okay, so initially I had a question for the speakers and the question spoke to the fact that, okay, in Nigeria, we understand that um, we are growing in Nigeria, right? We are developing. And then the whole responsibility does not fall on the shoulder of the government alone. We are even our government. So before I continue what I'm saying, Miss, this, are you Miss Allah or Shola or Sasson or you have your hands raised? Please can you unmute and then speak if you have a question. All right, uh, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. thank you. Yes, I just want to appreciate the two speakers for uh, right. doing justice to this uh, very topic. And um, I believe that if you give each of them two, two hours, they can't exhaust uh, what they have to tell us. But anyway, they have been able to ignite something in us and to initiate uh, something that will become a process that will help us to take positive actions uh, that will make us to begin to take cognizance of our health and the health of others. Uh, the, what I just want to add to that is the idea of a multi-disciplinary uh, approach to this issue of health and what I, as a person, uh, intend to do. For example, being a permaculturist and a farmer, one of the ways I think I need to begin to engage more closely is by taking responsibility to plant uh, a bit of what I eat because you see that a lot of things we eat in the market, we put in our bodies, uh, a lot of them has been over -chemical chemicalized. So as a matter of urgency, I'm taking it of myself to sensitize more people to have a backyard garden. So at that, you are sure of the process of production. You are sure that the tomato you are eating, the uh, leaf you are eating is not something that has been sprayed with chemical and all that. So that's one of it. And of course, in my backyard now, I have been, uh, some trees. I've been able to uh, plant mango trees. I've been able to plant cashew tree. I have a salsa in my backyard. I have, um, uh, what's it called, uh, orange as well, such that as these seasons comes, I don't have to you know, uh, depend on always buying some of these fruits. So those are positive actions that personally I've taken and uh, this particular uh, webinar tonight has also inspired me to know that it's not just about my health alone. If I'm healthy and my neighbor is not healthy, in the, the question of time, it also affects me. So I want to just thank you so much for uh, coming to enlighten us tonight. And I hope that when we have opportunity of inviting you another time, uh, you will gladly oblige us. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence for that um, comment and then the appreciation we really, really do. Thank you. So do we have questions? Anyone? I was saying something before Mr. Lawrence Shola started talking. So I was talking about the fact that it is not only government that has work to do. We actually have work to do because we are the government ourselves in the sense that Mrs. Otesh Shile has brought us to the point where we have to think on, okay, what I, what am I advocating for? What am I supposed to do in this situation? As much as we understand that to live it is a right. So it's a right for everyone. So you treat everybody's life as you will treat your own life because you understand that it is a right. So you're not only protecting your own life, you are protecting others' life. In fact, cab drivers need to understand that so that when they are driving people, they should understand that the lives of people are inside their car too. They are, it's very, very important, right? That kind of thing. So, yeah, I think we are going to be drop drawing the curtain 
to our webinar because it seems that everybody understood very well all that our speakers have said. And Dr. Mutiat brought us to one thing that stood out for me with Dr. Mutiat's presentation is that of taking folic acid as an expectant. No, not expectant now. Somebody that is planning to have a baby very soon. Yes, I've heard it from someone before, but Ash talking about it again. Mm -mm. It really, really brought that to remain brand so that at least if you've never heard of taking folic acid before, now you have heard from our doctor, a practitioner at that. So thank you very much, our speakers. I want to open the floor for Mr. Oluwa Tobiloba Oju Oluwa to actually appreciate our speakers before they take their leave and then we'll close this webinar on a very high note. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I also want to thank um, our speakers in person of um, we have Dr. Mutiat, we also have um, my own boss, uh, Mrs. Oteshile, thank you so much for availing yourself to honor this invitation. We, we are quite sure that whenever we call you or whenever we, uh, we want you to also come around, we will definitely do so. So we want to say um, you have not just invested in us, but in the generation which will carry this fire to the next generation as well. So I want to say thank you and thank you to everybody that honored this call to be here this evening. We so much appreciate you. We want to see that um, you become a part of us, which will definitely um, lead to a behavioral change that is meaningful in our society. Just like she said, it begins with you. So before what you don't have, you can't give out. It is, let it start with us. Myself now, I want to start eating orange so that I will give out vitamin C. That is what I've learned this evening. So thank you so much. I want to say thank you to everybody. Okay, let me allow for that student to round us off tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me leave us with one thing. My mommy will always sing this song for us. It's in Yoruba. And it's over when we go not to the Tuzulu. So everybody that has decided to do one thing or the other, yeah, now. Please, let's start doing it so that we can have the results. One thing is people don't see the effort that you put to things. People eventually see the results. So the results will speak to what else you have been doing in the secret. So let's give attention to our health and definitely the results will be produced. It is our body. We need to engage and keep the body for its use on this planet Earth, because that's the reason why we are existing on this Earth, and then help others to live right also. Thank you very much. I want to appreciate everybody that was here present, those online, those on Zoom, those on YouTube streaming, everyone. Thank you very much for coming around. Thank you very much to our speakers. We really appreciate your presence. I want to say, and I want to say thank you to Mr. Oluwa Tobilova for this opportunity to moderate this webinar this month. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do have a good night rest, everyone. And see you on the next webinar. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Nice, nice.